Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Beautiful Calgary days equals Chinooks, which equals clustered migraines and ringing in the ears. So it's typically not my sermon. Uh, but I was trying to get one together yesterday, but between Advil and darkness. So this one I found uh, from Father uh, Le Masters. And it's kind of pointing out what I wanted to say anyway. So <laughs> We all know what it means not to feel like ourselves. We can become so out of sorts for all kind of reasons that we do not think or act like we usually do. Sometimes we do not even recognize our own thoughts, words, or deeds as our own and wonder where certain impulses or behaviors came from. And we rightly fear what would happen if we accepted those inclinations and let them shape our souls. St. Paul recognized that human beings do not become their true self simply by trying to obey a code of conduct. The Old Testament law, about which he was an expert as a Pharisee, made clear to him how far he was from holiness for he consistently fell short of it. But he found a new identity in dying and rising with Christ. He found his true self in God's image and likeness. For it is no longer, that I, uh, no longer I who I live, but Christ who lives in me. Instead of being defined as one who inevitably fell short of the law and was captive of sin, he became, through faith, one of the uh, participants of the righteousness of Christ one who has risen in him from sin and death to life of holiness for which God created us in the first place. By faith in Jesus Christ, St. Paul became his true self. If that was a struggle for St. Paul, imagine the ordeal the interesting demonic man has gone through. He was so filled with demons and consuming, consumed by evil that he called himself legion which is meant a division of the Roman army containing thousands of soldiers. His sense of personal identity had disintegrated into a, ma a mass of great many demons. Like Adam and Eve, who stripped themselves of the divine glory by their sin, he too was naked without dignity of the child of God. He lived among the tombs, held captive by corruption, cutting off everyone else. He was such a terror that he broke chains and bound and fled alone in the desert. This poor man was an icon of our an alienation from ourselves, others, and life that evil so easily works in us. He is far from his true self. And even the best code of behavior will not have helped him. He did not need to be instructed. No, he needed to be healing. He needed healing and cleansing of soul, the restoration of his humanity. Like St. Paul, he needed to die and rise a new life in Christ. This is what the Lord gave him by casting the demons into the herd of pigs, which stampled, uh, stampeded into the lake and drowned. The locals were so astonished by what had happened, especially to see this fellow in his right mind, they were terrified, and to the point of asking Christ to leave. Understandably, the man who Christ uh, delivered wanted to go with him, but the Lord told him to stay and proclaim what he has done. He was asked to do a difficult job of bearing witness to the good news among the people who did not want to hear it and about his, how he was transformed. Which is interesting. They were scared of him, you know, hence why he was in the tombs away from everybody. Yeah, he was healed. Then they were scared of him again is what has happened and it's this fear that you know um, that we see in the people were they fearful because they lost a lot of swine not really they were fearful of what has happened and it's in us and our own uh, way of trying to break through with faith that we take care of this fear and I know we've heard it many times you know, the demon that we name is at the baptism is fear, fear be gone. And we talk about the swines, uh, the swine of herd, and that the evil one does not even have power over that. But we also see the mercy in Christ. He showed mercy on even the demons, 
He didn't put him to the abyss. He put him in swine, and they destroyed themselves. And if Christ shows this mercy to even demons, when he show it to us? But we can't be held in by fear. And, and that's really hard, especially when we turn on the TV or open the newspaper, if they're still around, listen to the radio, we're confronted by fear. Lots of fear. But we need to be like the demonic person, cleanse herself through the Lord, die and resurrect again in him. You know, it's kind of a bit of a shore shouting. Kind of gave up on my, the sermon here. <laughs> Have living now. It's kind of like our baptism that we see in this gospel. Here we're naked, living amongst among the dead people. Kind of like before baptism, becoming orthodox. You know, we're, you know, dead, looking to become dead. Living in the tombs, naked. And then we get baptized. We're chrismated. We put on clothing, the clothing of Christ, the armor of Christ. And we now live among the living. We go to the living. And this is, you know, taking up our cross and following him. And we see that. He wanted to go with Christ. And Christ's like, no, you need to stay here and proclaim what has God has done for you. To bear witness to all the people that are terrified of them and probably will, you know, probably won't have them over for dinner at any point. So it's this witness, and we see that in Cosmos and, and Damien, you know, the unmercenaries, which is basically a mercenary is paid for hire. Unmercenary is unpaid. And we see that with their lives, how they selfishly gave and healed. We see that with Pantalaemon, you know, all the lives of the saints, how they put on Christ. They were that demonic person, but they put on Christ, not just through um, baptism and chrismation and then, hey, I'm good. No, it's through the work, carrying of our cross, living, dying for each other, breaking of bread, as Father John Bear would say. This is how, and it's a lot of work. Yes, there's certain rules and responsibilities we have, but it's through faith, and it's through the face with this person, and through Cosmo and Damien that we're able to heal people with no, no payments, no nothing. They just went and healed, and it's truly beautiful, and we have that all in ourselves, but we need to work, and we need to do a lot of work and maintain the work. Faith without work is kind of nothing, so as we move forward, let's just reflect upon Cosmo and Damien of this garrison man, how Christ has transformed them and how Christ is transforming us, that we can become Christ-like and have Christ live in us always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is in our midst. Come on, <coughs>